And right here at Johns Hopkins, research is being done that may bring some hope to families whose dogs are suffering from a deadly form of brain cancer. Denise Koch explains the new experimental treatment that may one day save your best friend. Well, Nicole and Rick, the experimental treatment for glioblastoma, which is a very deadly form of brain cancer, will first be done on dogs. And the hope is, if it works, it may eventually save the lives of humans. Good job. Belle is a beautiful nine-year-old shepherd who very recently was diagnosed with a brain tumor. There's this sort of area that's very obvious that's abnormal. Dr. Kreichman diagnosed Belle using an MRI after the dog began having seizures. Right now, there is very little that can be done to save her life, other than invasive surgery that often kills the animal it is attempting to cure. No one wants their pet to be in pain. Having surgery always causes some pain. It would be nice if we could communicate with the dog and we knew what the dog really thought, <laughs> but we don't have that. So Bell's so owners have so decided not to try it. surgery and there's a little else that can be done. But right now, across the street at Johns Hopkins Sydney Kimmel Cancer Center, a team of scientists have been working for more than five years developing a technique that they hope could, in the future, save Bell and other dogs with cancerous brain tumors. It uses iron oxide nanoparticles. What is a nanoparticle? A little over a million times smaller than a cell, a human cell. Dr. Ivkov has developed a way to take an iron oxide nanoparticle, inject it into a tumor, and then heat it using a magnetic field. He created this machine where so far they're experimenting on mice. The nanoparticles, if, they're, if we've already injected them into the tumor, the mouse will go inside here and then we apply the magnetic field to treat the tumor. That heats up, that heats up the nanoparticles. It heats up the nanoparticles. The key is to control the heat using these probes he's developed because as he demonstrated with a screwdriver, the coils create a powerful magnetic field. Whoa! This screwdriver basically went from room temperature to a couple thousand degrees in a matter of seconds. Once heated, the tumor is then directly radiated. The combination of heat and radiation has long been known to damage cancer cells. The problem we had before was it was very difficult to heat an individual part of the brain uh, and not injure the person. We'd have to heat large areas. Sounds like you are very hopeful about this. These nanoparticles can be given right to the tumor and, when we, and so we can heat just the area that we should be heating while the radiation is given. Dr. Kleinberg is part of the team that will treat the canine patients using an MRI machine like the one used on humans. Inside the brain, no matter what we do, we've been unable to cure very many people at all. Uh, and that's the reason a breakthrough would be very exciting. Dr. Ivkov has built a second machine for canine patients. Dogs whose owners decide because of an otherwise terminal diagnosis, they want to be part of this clinical study. What we learn in the dogs, we can then translate to humans. This is kind of nice because we're going to do it first in pets. And then if people are lucky, they'll get the same treatment too. As for Bell, If this were a three-year-old dog, I think we would consider very strongly doing the protocol because she's a nine-year-old dog and the shepherds don't have much of a lifespan after 10, 10, 11 years. That comes into the decision-making process for us. Okay, you want to go home? While Belle's family decided she's simply too old to be put through this protocol, it could offer real hope to other pet owners whose dogs get this difficult diagnosis. I have yet to see any physicians that aren't really excited about helping us to help pets. So the team at Hopkins is hoping to research the nanoparticle treatment on five or six dogs. If your pet is sadly diagnosed with a brain tumor and you would like to pursue this protocol, reach out to Johns Hopkins Sydney Kimmel Cancer Center um, because it could very well work. And if it works on dogs, then of course it would be an incredible breakthrough for humans who most often die from glioblastoma. Wow. A lot of hope there. Yeah, but sometimes absolutely. we forget yeah. the amazing work that is going on right, right in our own here. backyard. You bet. Yeah. Unbelievable. You bet. Thanks, Thank you, Denise. Denise.